on the last episode of 10,000 Hours. I've been in the basketball slash social media business for so long that I've seen how much has changed over the years, for better and for worse. It can give kids a false sense of reality that really only leads to depression and letdowns in the long run. But that part isn't shown enough. It's normally just all the good stuff. <laughs> Jerem and Barrington were having good seasons, and both of them were on somewhat of a winning streak. Some of the wins were pretty, and some of them not so much. But me observing, it was nice seeing them starting to use some of the stuff we work on every day. I don't expect perfection, but I mean, at least try it. My job will never be only to highlight the good, but to show you all the things that come with this sport. This story was far from over, but the darkness had finally arrived. Today, uh, I was just like chilling at my coach. He told me like a while ago he was gonna send uh, like them, the coaches. And uh, earlier today, Cal called me, like Cal Berkeley, and we had like a long conversation with the coach. And he said he was gonna like watch the game, talk to Poo, talk to Poo, and then um, just like he said, they said like they really like me. He was telling me like they have like a point guard spot and a big man spot. So now nah, I just gotta work. It's a big day, right? Something as a young hooper we all long for, for all your hard work to go notice. To put some context behind this, Jerm was having some big scoring games. Player of the week. It was cool watching this game come along. But when he told me Cal was watching, 
in my head, I'm like, uh oh, wonder how this is gonna turn out. game started off great. They were sharing the ball, playing hard. Jerm was playmaking. Most already know he could score, so it's all good. But Bishop just kept hanging around. Both teams playing good basketball. And then what I feared the most began to happen. Jerm went ice cold. Normally I wouldn't worry about this because at some point he's gonna go off. But the problem is that he knows Cal is watching. And what do most players do when it's their first big moment? They begin to force things that aren't there. It was hard to watch. Normally I yell from the stands, but sometimes the best thing to do is let players just go through this. I knew how to calm him down, but I wanted him to figure it out on his own. And even looking back on this, I still don't regret that. Hey, we on defense right now. First four minutes. Let's win the first four minutes. You understand? Let's win the first four minutes. All right. Hey, and we do that by locking in defensively. Locking in defensively. Hey, and then you know what? In that in that in that last quarter, we all we got real selfish. Everybody started being horny for the damn basketball. Don't be horny for the ball. Play together. You understand? Facing, execute, and trust our stuff. All right, let's go. Let this be a lesson for everyone out there. When you lose sight of the team and the team goes, you risk the team losing faith in you. Did he start scoring? Yeah. There were some moments where he began to pick it up, like some really high level reads that I was impressed with. He's not a selfish player. He's a good kid, but this is deeper than that. This was bad though, like real bad. People in the stands were getting frustrated. These were Jerm's normal looks too, but he just wasn't connecting. And that led to everyone trying to talk to him, giving him their advice. Some of them weren't on Sarah's coaching staff. But what all this leads up to is Jeremy's confidence shot straight out the window. You can see it leaving his body. But there was still time to be the hero. A chance to maybe make all this pain go away. One shot. sucks about life sometimes you can pour your soul into it and the world won't give you anything back and we work our hardest to risk failing on the biggest stages and for lots of people it happens over and over it's depressing and i sort of speak from experience and to keep it up for a while it used to mess me up 
of this life though, not everything is meant for you. This wasn't a missed opportunity, more like gained experience. Everything you've seen so far in this series, it was just a prologue. The real fun was right around the corner. Germ just didn't know it yet. Oh, so what? So yeah, they skin. Yeah, bro. You gotta have thick skin. I do, but I, 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 it's been going on for years. How, how do you have thick skin? If you're in a position it's been right going now. On for years. Jeremy, if you don't have no other question, just look at where we at right now. And you can tell me if you have thick skin or not. You told you tell me all the time that you built for this. What the hell was that in the first half? Built for what? You weren't even playing hard. You was on defense walking around. And I, I can't use the tired as an, as an excuse because in the second half, he was playing hard. Like, you have made a couple good passes in the first half, but like defensively, you just, I don't, I'm looking at you not talking. Looking at you. And you keep telling me, see, you gotta remember, bro, sometimes, and I have to learn this. Sometimes people watching you, especially people like us, can see more than what you can't see on the court. Especially when you're young. When you get older, it don't work all the time like that. But especially now. Now let's tie the story together. We'll bring back in the Hezzy guy, what he means to our guys. Jeremon. Jeremon, for sure, Jeremon. She jumping for her. I ain't even did shit. Now get your hands up. Get your hands up. He jumping and I ain't even did nothing yet. <laughs> That's all. Awfully good. Most people actually don't like Ryan because he talks a lot of trash. And he doesn't need a reason to do it either. That's two of them. But Barrington and Jeremy know him for something completely different. If you just take time to listen to him, you see that he really knows the game. But he's not holding the info in, he's teaching it to him. Want to get some action though? Come on, let's get some action. Yep, that's good action, work. And one, and one. Put it set the screen and get the mismatch. Go up, middle germ, set it middle, set it middle. Set him to space next time, bro. Set him to space. Way to refuse it, bro. And the cool thing about it is the more Germ studies Ryan, you can see the gears starting to turn in his head. And when Ryan sees Germ, he sees a little brother. It's dope, actually. Ball game, find that shooter. Way to shoot, Germ. That's a dime, Germ. Here, I picked that up. We sick. Yeah, yeah, we sick. I 
I just got a buck on your man. This is how the brotherhood works that Pooh and I have been working so hard to build so that one day these guys can play on a bigger platform. One more. One more. Oh, man. Hey, youngin, you don't play basketball in the corner. You play out here. This is where the space at. Ain't no space over there. All right? No space over there ever. Never. Yeah, Sierra King, we at big boy school. It's time for the big boy test. We ready. You think Barrington's fully ready and stuff? Oh, I know he's ready. Mentally and physically. Why does this game mean a lot to him? The exposure you get playing against a team like this, you just can't measure. This is considered one of the top group of kids, and that's who you want to go against, the top kids. It's the playoffs, and this is the matchup they've been waiting for since before the season. If you don't know about Sierra Canyon, they're a powerhouse in California. And the cameras always follow them, especially since Bronny started hooping here, even though he's not playing today. There's a monster on Sierra Canyon, Amari Bailey. He's the biggest obstacle. You stop him, you got a chance of winning the game. Who ultimately would decide the game was Tyler. The nicest kid off the court, but an agitator and a bully on the court. All eyes on Rebe. It's what you wanted, right? Well, okay. We came to see the show. Sierra was undefeated all season. And to make matters worse, Tyler was trying to punk the whole team. But you know the whole saying, don't poke a beer. I actually think that saying is soft, but today, they definitely woke the beer. It started with turnovers. Then their defense turned all the way up. And 
And if anybody in the gym was wondering if Amari was top five. Well. Tables have been turned. Amar went to work and Rebay fell apart. Blew almost a 20 point lead. Game over. Season over. A short COVID season laced with good times and blown opportunities on the biggest stage. It sucks because Rebay never put it all together because their team was never fully healthy. And while everyone sat around shaking hands, people trying to make them feel better. You could tell how pissed Barrington was. And I hope that feeling wills him to get back in the lab. Fed into the game, fed into the crowd a little bit too much. And I started taking this game personal instead of keeping it a team game. Like in the first quarter, they, they were shocked. I mean, everybody was getting the, getting the piece, everybody went off. And then it was kind of like, okay, now we got the lead. We got to try and blow this thing open where we could have kept it a team effort. And I feel like that hurt us. Then also just attention to detail and remembering stuff. That's our biggest problem, and it's been our problem since we started. With season all wrapped up, it's back in the lab. But today's session is different. Today is about love. And one way to show it is you pass good information that you've obtained to someone else who can use it. It's special when you have two ex-NBA players, a G League borderline NBA player, an NBA assistant coach, a basketball legend, and then a list of top-ranked players in California in the same gym. This isn't a camp or anything like that. We didn't put it together. It's just another day in the lab. An opportunity for iron to sharpen iron. And for all of us to keep building our brotherhood. To be honest, bro, I, I, I look up to Jerm because, like, at that age, bro, I wasn't, like, as committed, like, to the grind, you know what I'm saying? To being in the lab, to actually putting in the work, like, even now, it was hard for me to get up this morning to get here, and he does it every morning, so, like, those things are, you know, things that I look up to about him, and just, you know, staying the course, man. It's kind of hard today with, you know, a lot of kids getting more exposure than others, and, you know, not really having anyone to guide you, you know, before he met Dev. So like, you know, those type of things, like just grinding it out and staying the course, that I, I respect that about Jerm. Like that's what draws me to him. You are, you are. 
earn the right to be able to talk to you. I'd rather be here. Do a montage of him just getting his ass busted for two hours. I, I will take that one, bro. I'm the first. That's the first time I've ever been dropped in my life, and he did it, bro. Bro, this is because I, I've grown a love for you, my guy. Like it's a little brother, so <laughs> it's just you. this ain't even got nothing to do with you dropping yeah, me. It's just because out of love, bro. Thank you. I hope you liked him and can fit him. If not, you know I told you what to do with him. Yeah, All right. Yeah, what's up, bro? You like this? This was fire. Mm -hmm. My boy, All American. Ah. <laughs> this was fire. Yeah. That's what we shooting for, bro. It ain't out of reach, bro. You know what I'm saying? That's the motivation to go get it right there. Thank you, sir. Yeah, that's the motivation that's to go get it. All American. Yeah, it's fire. Yeah, thank you. All right, now, Kai. Kai on camera. All How beautiful is this sport? Some of the highest of the highs and the lowest of the lows. Everything that comes with it makes our journey so special. They turn strangers into family, a bond that you can't escape no matter what. It's been a vibe. And the best part about it, the story isn't over yet. In comes the dime. The conclusion of this chapter came together in the desert. How would Germ handle that next biggest moment? Find out on the next episode of 10,000 Hours. Thank you guys for tuning in. Hopefully you guys enjoyed episode three. I got my boys here with me, Calvin. Uh, R2 B-Ball, everybody knows him as R2. Um, but I just want to thank you guys for really supporting what we're doing with 10,000 hours. We're looking to take this all the way to Netflix or some bigger platform. We can only do that if you guys like, comment, subscribe, turn on your notifications, all that. Your support absolutely matters. Um, we're a small team, Calvin. We ain't including anything that we, you know, we deal with the episode here. I'm just saying, guys, it takes a lot of work for us to do this, so it'd be great if you guys could support us as much as possible by subscribing and liking to our channel. Yep, this has been the camera guy from, I mean, I can't even, from a, for a long time, he's doing a great job. He's helped me take Chapter 2 to a different level, and I fully give him a lot of credit for that. Now, Creator Classic. Creator class, Classic is coming up. Um, copy tickets now. We'll put the link in the description. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'll let R2 um, give you know a little bit of a breakdown here. So we have three main events going on for the Creator Classic. We have our Shooter Shoot event, which is going to be my event, competing against some of the top shooters of all influencers. We have a mini dunk uh, jam fest with my boy Marcellus Howard. And then lastly, we have the cage. No dunking one on one. We got some good matchups that a lot of people want to see. You know, something we talked about is maybe Hezzy got in Friga. They just went at it some five on five park, and Hezzy's got a lot to say about that. Well, that's going to be a good matchup. We want to see the Austin Mills play against each other for the name. Who's the real Let's Austin see. Mills? Who the real Austin Mills is? They got the Spider Man meme. <laughs> yeah. Spider Man, Spider Man. See who the real Mills is. So. Um, Austin Mills versus Austin Mills would be a good game. We want to see Bree Green versus Jenna Bandy for the girls to tip off on that one. And then the other one is... Rematch. Rematch. Allen I or White was, Iverson. Allen Iverson. White Iverson versus Kenny Chow. So we got some matchups, man. Upset. I'm, I'm super excited. I got these guys with me. Uh, and we're just, we're just going to try to take things to the next level and really create something new for the future creators and the next generation. So thank you guys for all your support. Um, we'll see you on the next video.